Hello everyone and welcome back to your piano lesson. If you are here for the first time, I am Gianluca Fronda, your virtual piano teacher. If you want to discover interesting facts about me, you can watch the introduction video of this channel. I'm leaving the link in the description of this video, where you will find also the link for my artistic channel Gianluca Fronda, pianist and composer, if you're interested in original music and covers. Talking about this channel, don't forget to subscribe and uh, let me know about yourself uh, by commenting, tell me when uh, you have started, if you are finding my channel interesting and you are improving your skills also thanks to my videos. And don't forget also to share with your friends if there is anybody interesting in piano music, any that, anybody that you know. So now time to go to our lesson. Today this is the 13th music theory lesson and I feel the need of clarifying uh, what I've explained last week because I've introduced last week the compound time signatures and uh, explaining how they derive from the simple time signatures but today we have to understand how to consider these time signatures, these compound time signatures I mean if the number, the top number, the numerator has to be considered like the number of the beats of the counts or the subdivisions of the beat. It's something that I recorded also the last week and then editing, just when editing, I, I noticed, I realized that it was a bit too much. Indeed, you have noticed maybe something um, in the page that I didn't mention at all then at some point. And today is definitely time to explain it, to talk about it. Now, let's dive into the understanding of the, uh, what I mean. I will write now, um, again, uh, compound time signatures. But now I want to write in this way. I want to divide the, the page in three columns, yeah? So I'm writing here simple times Here I write simply slow, referring to the uh, compound time signatures, and fast, referring to the compound time signatures. I will uh, simply copy these ones. Here I do 6, 8, here I do 9, 8, and here I do 12, 8. Yeah, I write them again, the same, but I will definitely add something on the side. And in this way I explain what I mean. Obviously here, as you know, I should write one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and four. Four or four quarters. Now, pay attention to me. What has to be understood is this, that when, obviously, these compound time signatures are to be considered in slow tempo. You can definitely consider 3-8 like made of three counts, three beats, each of them worth one eighth, one quaver. Here the same. In the slow 6-8 you will consider 6-8 like made of six counts, six beats, each of them worth one eighth. And you will do one, two, three, four, five, six, or as I said, as I mentioned the last week, one, two, three, one, two, three, repeating twice, one, two, three, stressing the one. Today we understand, the, the second time that I say one, today we understand why. When the 3-8 is played fast, the 3-8 is considered like made of one big beat per bar, this beat is worth one dotted crotchet. So the beat is one dotted crotchet, just one. This is the beat. One beat. This is the big difference. That here we have three beats. And each of them is worth one quaver. Here one beat, one dotted crotchet, where the three eighths are subdivisions of the beat. Will be one and day, one and day, one and day, 
one and day, one and day. Obviously, you can even say instead of one and day, one and day, you can say one, two, three, one, two, three, quite fast. But anyways, is completely different the approach if compared to the, to the slow version of the 3-8. A very slow 3-8 could be... For example. But if it's fast... Where the subdivision is one and day, 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 one. So it's completely different the way you consider the three eight in this in these fast tempos, in these fast compositions. The same story will be now when we talk about the six eight. Here you have six beats, and each of them is worth one quaver. But when it comes to six eight fast, you will have to consider like the 6-8 like made of two beats I write first of all two beats two beats and where each of them obviously is worth a dotted crotchet so in this case we have two beats and each of them will be divided in three equal parts so the six number six is indicating the six um, the six subdivisions of the two main counts but we understand even more, and that's why I wrote the Simple Times as well, um, why I say two counts. Because remember that it is derived from the 2-4. In the 2-4 we have two counts. Each of them is uh, worth a quarter note, one crotchet. And obviously in the Simple Times you divide the count into equal parts. You would do one and two and. Whichever is the note that you have. You could have, for example, a minim, or you could have... Uh, and then you do the bar line and you could have two crotchets but anyways each of them has to be considered like divided into half counts one and two and or one and two and when you consider six eight fast you know that the beats are two and each beat is divided in three equal parts so this is the first count, this is the second one, where you do one and a, two and a, or if you want, one, two, three, one, two, three, or even more, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and in this case could be almost similar to the other one that I've played. So it depends, we obviously in the future we will start using practical examples. I will take famous pieces, I will play and I will show the difference in between the two ones. The 9-8, it's really unlikely that will be considered in 9 um, beats, obviously each of them uh, worth 1 eighth. Anyways, it's not impossible, it's not forbidden, 9 beats, you can for example consider it in this way when you play um, uh, f something for the first time, when you're studying it, but in general the 9 eighth is definitely considered like made of 3 beats, each of them worth a dotted crotchet, so three beats. And same story, 12 8. We should say 12 beats, and each of them worth a quaver. You will understand that diving more into the, the study of the music theory and the, in the practice of the, any of the instruments that you're studying, that uh, the 12 8 is considered uh, made, mm, as made of four beats, and each of them, as you can now finally easily understand, um, each of them worth a dotted crotchet four beats each of them worth a dotted crotchet four beats um, so indeed going back one second to the 9 8 8 so why three beats it is derived from the 3 4 as you remember we have multiplied 3 4 by 3 halves and indeed you see 3 4 um, comes the 9 eighth. Indeed, three counts here are divided in two equal parts, in two half counts, one and two and three, and in the simple time. But could even.
considered like made of the three crochets or anything that is equivalent, yeah? One and two and three. And when you pass to the uh, fast nine eighth, you will do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's definitely worth counting three times one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, instead of doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine is too complicated to think in this way. Yeah, and same story when you will have to face the 12 8 here we have um, in the simple time. You can have a bar made of a semi brief, a whole note, or two minims, for example, two half notes, or four crotchets, four quarter notes. Yeah, or even the equivalent ones using the eighth notes, the quavers. You would do one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so on. Here, no, you will have to do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or if you want, one and day, two and day, three and day, four and day. It's about understanding how to subdivide. In the simple times, you divide, the subdivision is a binary, it's a binary subdivision. Dividing two equal parts into half, into half counts. Here you have to divide in three equal parts. It's about dividing the count in thirds. Here one big beat divided in three equal parts. Here two big beats divided in uh, three equal parts and so on. Um, the subdivision in three anyways has been already understood, explained, clarified, talking about the three parts. Do you remember that I have told you that, obviously, up to this lesson where I explained the triplets, you were used to divide, as I am repeating also today several times, to divide into equal parts accounts. I said that at some point, during the composition, in simple time, you might find something, uh, three quavers, for example, joined, with a three on top and this curved line, meaning that this bit has to be divided in three equal parts, and then you go back to the binary subdivision. You can find the triplet on any of the counts. Here in these pieces you pass from the subdivision in three to the one to, def to the default one in two. But when you face the compound time signatures and you have to play them fast quickly, you have to automatically consider the beat divided in three. Indeed, in this case, the top number is telling you the amount of subdivisions here. If it's slow, it's telling you the amount of cans. Uh, repeating, uh, and I will never be uh, tired to repeat, that it's really likely that the 9 8 and the 12 8 are automatically to be considered in fast tempo. Indeed, I can even cross saying that they will definitely be simply used for faster tempos. Okay? I really hope that even though it's quite complicated what I am saying today, um, but I hope that is uh, clear enough. If you need any extra explanation, feel free to comment, as you are doing lately. Um, and I'm really glad that I'm uh, getting reactions, uh, feedback and so on. So, feel free to let me know how it's going, if you've understood everything. Uh, if it's the first time you're landing on my channel, thanks to this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. See you, bye.